Let's talk about eight supersized resilience strategies, meaning strategies to be more resilient as you're building, growing, and supersizing your business to supersize your business. Sharon Horton Nelson here with Supersize Business, and I was going to talk about the fitness and wellness industry and how it's important to be resilient in that. Maybe I'll give a couple of examples as I talk through what I changed my mind and decided to talk about today, and that is the eight C's, and it's because all the words start with C, to remember ways to be resilient, the best strategies to be resilient, and they are confidence, competence, which is not the same thing, but competence will help our confidence, control, connections and connectedness, commitment, always important, calmness, which is the one I struggle the most with, uh, communication and self-care. Why are these things important? Well, one of the, they're all strategies and all ways to build our resilience. So when we need to call upon it, we've got a framework and a system in place that will ensure that we deal with every challenge, every setback, every fiasco, every uh, problem, every change that comes down or comes our way, we'll be able to confidently and competently handle it. Uh, we do this by getting connected, getting connected and having connections and being parts of communities and having mastermind groups or being part of mastermind groups or just having a team of people or a group of people that we can call upon when we find ourselves in a tough situation and we think we know how to handle it, but we just want to bounce the ideas off of someone else. Maybe that's been there already because there are millions of business owners and millions of other business people that have already solved the problems that you're trying to solve, that have already had the challenges that you're currently facing and overcome them. And what faster, better way to learn and to avoid some of the mistakes we can make is from learning from other people. Uh, we want to learn from the past, not only our past, but other people's past and other people's experiences. It's why I love my friend Avil Beckford's uh, offerings and the things that she does. She teaches us how to read books and how to read things and put them all together to have a problem solving mindset, etc., so that we are prepared, like we talked about emergency plans the other day, for when things happen. We cannot possibly imagine and come up with all of the things that can happen when we're building and growing and supersizing our business. But we can build our resilience. We can fill our toolbox with the things that we need in order to weather any storm that comes our way. I do like idioms. I notice I talk in them a lot. Maybe that's from doing five years of idioms, what they mean, where they come from, and how you could use them to grow and build and supersize your business. Uh, so Let's think about your industry today, whatever it is. I was going to talk about the, the fitness and wellness industry because the older I get, the more important I know it is that I eat right. I take care of myself. I sleep. I hydrate. I take the supplements that are important for me to take, and only I can figure that out. We each have to figure it out. We can, again, look for experts, seek help, but bottom line, we need to test it out on ourselves and be our own science experiment to figure out what's truly right for us. We should have that same philosophy and that same mindset with our business. We can learn from other people. We can read a bunch of different books. We can study and learn and grow. But until we put things into action, nothing is really going to tell us if it's the right strategy for us or not. So I guess that's all I've got today. I just wanted to share those. And I guess I could talk about each of the C's, but I think we know what each of them mean. And again, here's an example of in order to make something our own, we need to decide what it means for us. What does confidence mean for you and your business and your industry? What does competence mean for you and your business and your industry? What does commitment mean? What does, I think, resilience and commitment, without commitment, there is no resilience. We have to commit to the thing that we want. And again, calmness, that's the one I'm going to continually work on. Although I am awesome in an emergency. I'm great in an emergency and then I I blow, I, you know, blow off steam after I've dealt with the emergency. I learned that early in my youth and my corporate career uh, from a couple different accidents and from a couple other safety violations that people in corporate America uh, did and lost digits and things. And so I learned you got to be calm in the moment, especially when you got a team. And then afterwards, uh, have your emotional reaction, figure out and analyze the situation so that it doesn't happen again, etc. And put systems in place so that it doesn't happen again. Uh, we want to stay hopeful, which is probably 
it's it's another way to be resilient we want to take care of ourselves of course we want to take action again uh, i tend to have a propensity to action and then ask permission later if i needed someone's permission to take action uh, but i found that that's the fastest way to get results and nothing happens if we're just sitting and thinking about it we have to do something with what we're thinking about and learning to be resilient, to grow, to change, to create the business that we want. That's all I've got today. Have an awesome day. If I can help you, I added a Q&A section to this particular segment. So you can ask your question below during the video if you're watching me live or after. I, I haven't done it yet, but we'll see if I can actually see the questions in order to answer them. Have a great day and I'll of course be with you tomorrow. Go be resilient.